In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered around the table of the Lord to proclaim His wonder marvelous works and to give thanks to the Father who in His Son, Christ Jesus, makes us a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people he acquired for his own. Even the oil and the chrism which we bless in this Eucharist remind us of the multiple gifts which the Father through his Son in the Holy Spirit entrust to the ministry of the Church. The common priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, and the comfort and the liberation of those in grave sickness and in the face of death. 500 years ago in Limasawa, the first Easter Mass was celebrated in our beloved land. Let us thank the Lord for the gift of faith, for the call to be members of the Church, 
and for the mission to proclaim His mercy and love for, to the world. We pray for a renewed appreciation and a more fervent living out of the faith. Let us beg for His forgiveness for failing to be faithful to His love. Let us ask for the strength to be true to our calling to be God's faithful witness in the world. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, to and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, Therefore, I ask, ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the, all the angels and saints, saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord, to the Lord our, our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who anointed the only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. 
He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offsprings among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may always be with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, He is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see Him, even those who pierce Him. All the peoples of the earth will lament Him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
the Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Man proposes, God disposes. Nagplaplano ang tao, pero ang Diyos naman ang gumagabay ng mga pangyayari. Ang ganda po ng plano naming mga pare, mga tatlong buwan, taon, tatlong buwan ng nakaraan. Ngayong March 31 ay akalimang daang anibersaryo ng unang misa na ginawa ng grupo ni Magellan sa Limasawa noong 1521. Easter noon, kaya ang first Easter Mass sa Pilipinas ay nangyari noong March 31, 1521. Ngayong taon, ang Easter ay April 4, kaya itinakda ng CBCP na bubuksan natin sa buong bansa ang commemoration ng 500th anniversary ng Christianity sa April 4, 2021. Sa araw na ito, bubuksan ang mga jubilee doors ng lahat ng mga cathedrals sa mga dioceses sa buong bansa. Dito magsisimula ang ating 500th anniversary celebration. Pero ano ang mangyayari ngayong March 31? Dito sa Maynila, nagkasundo na ang mga pare na sa araw na ito ay ipagdiriwang natin ang Chrism Mass. Ito po ay ang pagbibindisyon ng langis para sa mga may sakit. At uh, para po sa pagbibindisyon ng banal na Krisma, ang mahalimuyak na langis na ginagamit sa binyag sa kumpil at sa pag o -orden. Kadalasan, ito ay ginagawa sa umaga ng Huwebe Santo at kasama sa pagbibinisyo ng mga langis ay ang pagsasariwa ng pag-ako ng mga pangako ng mga pare sa harap ng kanilang obispo. Ito ay tinuturing nating pista ng mga kaparian. Nakakatipon ang lahat ng mga pari sa harap ng kanilang obispo upang ipakita ang pagkakaisa ng mga kaparian. Iisa lang ang pagpapari ng lahat. 
ito ay ang pagpapari ni Kristo. At ang punong pari nila sa isang diocese ay ang kanilang obispo. Kay ganda ng plano bilang pagunita natin sa first mass sa bansa, magkakatipon ang lahat ng mga pari sa Archdiocese of Manila para sa Christmas na ililipat natin mula sa Holy Thursday papunta sa Holy Wednesday ngayong araw, March 31. Ang hindi inaasahan ay ang paglala ng pagkalat ng COVID-19. Kaya ngayon, nasa ECQ tayo. Bawal ang malalaking pagtitipon. Kaya may dali-daling pagbabago. Ilipat na lang ang pagsasariwa ng mga pangako ng mga pare sa pagdating ng bagong Archbishop natin. Kung kailan man yon, yan ay hindi pa natin alam ngayon. Ipagpapatuloy na lang ang Christmas kahit na walang mga pare at walang mga tao. Kailangan kasi ang banal na mga langis sa pagbibigay ng mga sakramento. Ang mga langis na bibindisyonan sa misang ito ay ibabahagi sa mga parokya upang gamitin nila sa sakramento ng pagpapahid na banal langis sa mga may sakit at ang krisma naman ay gagamitin sa binyag at sa kumpil. Kahit na simple lang ang krisimas na ito, ito'y nilalaho ka naman ng marami sa ating mga online platforms. Salamat po sa inyong pagdalo sa Banal na Misa. Kayo pong nakikiisa sa atin sa inyong mga tahanan. Kaya, man proposes, God disposes. Ang langis ay isang ordinaryong pero mahalagang gamit sa pang-araw-araw na buhay, lalong-lalo na doon sa Palestina. Ang langis na ginagamit noon sa lugar ng ni Jesus ay galing sa ulibo. Ginagawang langis ang mga bunga ng ulibo, pinipiga ang mga ito. Ito'y ginagamit sa pagkain, ginagamit sa pampaganda, ginagamit na pampalusog at pampasigla ng katawan, tulad ng sa pagmamasahe, at ginagamit din sa pagbabanyos sa mga may sakit. Kaya ang langis ay naging tanda ng kasaganaan, ng kalakasan at ng kagalingan. Kaya ang tanda ng pagbibigay ng grasya sa mga may sakit ay ang pagpapahid ng langis sa kanila. Ito po ay sakramento para sa may sakit. Hindi lang sa mga naghihingalo na. Kaya kapag malubha na ang kalagayan ng isang tao, maaari na siyang bigyan ng sakramento para siya ay gumaling. May kumakalat palang video tungkol sa virtual anointing of the sick. Ito po'y isang paraan ng pagdarasal para sa may sakit, pero hindi ito sakramento ng pagpapahid ng banala langis. There is no virtual sacrament of the anointing of the sick. Talagang kailangan na mapahira ng langis ang may sakit ng pare with the proper prayers para magkaroon ng sakramento. Tayo ay nilalagyan din ng banal na krisma sa sakramento ng binyag at kumpil. Naniniwala tayo na si Jesus ay ang Kristo at ang ibig sabihin ng Kristo ay ang nilangisan, the anointed one. And people have been waiting for the anointed one for more than a thousand years in Israel na ipapadala ng Diyos ang kanyang pinili ang nilangisan. Ang pagkalangi, ang paglalangis ay tanda ng pagtatalaga ng pagpipili. At ang pagtatalagang ito ay ginagawa sa mga pare, 
sa mga hari at sa mga propeta na itinilaga ng Diyos. Dahil sa naniniwala tayo na si Jesus ay ang Kristo, tayo na naniniwala kay Jesus ay tinatawag na Kristiyano. Hindi lang si Jesus ang nilangisan, tayo rin ay nilangisan. Nakiisa din tayo sa mga gawain ni Jesus bilang mga pare, mga hari at mga propeta. Itinalaga din tayo ng Diyos. Kaya tayo ay mga pare. Bilang mga pare, maaari tayong mag-alay ng sakripisyo na nagpapabanal sa mundo. Nakikiisa tayo sa sakripisyo ni Jesus sa banal na misa. At ang ating buhay at mga gawain ay inaalay din natin sa Diyos kasama ng pag-aalay ni Jesus sa banal na misa. So you are able to join the sacrifice of Christ because you are priests. Our priesthood as the ordained is meant to serve your priesthood. That is why ours is ministerial priesthood, a priesthood of service, while yours is royal priesthood. Tayong lahat ay mga pari. At tayong lahat ay mga hari. Our kingship is patterned after the kingship of Christ. We exercise our kingship by service. Maliwanag ang sinabi ni Jesus na ang dakila sa atin ay ang naglilingkod sa lahat. Ang bawat isa din sa atin ay mga propeta. Ang propeta ay nagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos. Hindi lang tayo tagatanggap ng mabuting balita. Tayo ay tagapaghati din ng mensahe ng Diyos sa ating kapwa. We are gifted with faith in order to give the faith. Kaya bal balang, bilang mga binyagan, tayo ay nagsasalita at naninindigan para sa katotohanan at para sa mga aral ng Diyos. Nakikisa tayong lahat sa pagpapalawak ng kaharian ng Diyos ng mga aral ni Kristo. Ang ating Ibanghelyo na binasa kanina ay hango sa unang pagbasa natin na galing sa aklat ni Propeta Isaias. Tinupad ni Jesus ang sinabi ng propeta. Inako ni Jesus na siya ay ang itinalaga ng Diyos at nilangisan ng Espiritu Santo upang ibahagi ang mabuting balita sa mga dukha at tumungulong sa mga nangangailangan. Tinanggap ni Jesus ang misyong ito na ibinigay sa Kanya ng banal na Espiritu. At ganyan nga talaga ang buhay ni Jesus. Pumunta siya sa maraming lugar ng Galilea upang manawagan ng pagsisisi. Hindi, hindi niya hinayaan na puntahan siya ng mga tao Pinuntahan niya ang mga tao at nagsalita sa kanila sa kanilang mga sinagoga. Ang mga tinutulungan niya ay ang mga mahihirap, ang mga may sakit, ang mga makasalanan, ang mga inaalihan ng masasamang espiritu. Talagang siya ay para sa mga dukha, para sa mga taong hindi na pinapansin. Akala ng mga tao noong panahon niya na ang Kristo'y darating na tulad ng mga hari at mga generals na maging matagumpay sa digmaan at maluwalhati, dakila. This is not so. Jesus' manner of being Christ is not of greatness but of service. Service to the poor and offering himself so that we may be saved. Naalaala natin ito noong nakaraang linggo. 
na siya ay pumasok sa kanyang lungsod. Hindi nakasakay sa isang kabayong pandigma, kabayong puti o kabayong itim. Ngunit nakasakay sa isang maliit na asno, isang trabaho, isang hayop na ginagamit sa pagtatrabaho. Mahalagang tanda nito kasi ang pagkakristyano natin ay ayon sa pagkakristo ni Jesus. We too are anointed to bring the good news to the poor. Kaya ang ating Christmas ay nagpapaalaala sa atin sa kahulugan ng ating pagiging anointed. We share in the Christness of Jesus. Nakikiisa tayo sa pagkakristo ni Jesus. Tayo rin ay hindi langisan. Maging masigla at na maging matapang sana tayo sa ating pagiging kristiyano. Kaya ang ating pagbibindisyon sa mga langis na ito ay nagpapaalaala sa atin ng ating commitment to healing, pagpapagaling, langis ng pagpapahid sa mga may sakit. At ang ating commitment na maging tapat sa pagkakristo ni Jesus bilang mga hari, bilang mga pari, at bilang mga propeta. Please stand. Let us pray to God our Father who has continually guided and accompanied us in our journey of faith all these years. With confidence, let us implore Him and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, mother and teacher, that she may continue to be faithful in fulfilling her mission of teaching, guiding, and nourishing her children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy, that they may have strength to shepherd generously the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the nations of the world, that they may work together towards the dialogue of solidarity, the culture of peace, sharing of good, and generosity of people of goodwill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may always seek the, the ways of righteousness, justice, and mercy, and lead our people with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the poor, the elderly, the sick, and all those in need, that they may be strengthened by our love for them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That there will be a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered, that we may be renewed in our faith life and may take part in shaping the church and society according to gospel values. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer, that the dead may find eternal joy in the heart of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. God, our Father, we lift up to you our petitions as we trust in your mercy and wisdom. May we come to share the glory of your Son who draws our hearts to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The oil of the sea. Thanks be to God. The oil for the holy chrism. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, with gratitude to God, Lord of life and of death, we gather the oil, fruit of the earth and of human work. Let us bless the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent His Son to heal those who are brokenhearted and to cure our infirmities. Let us invoke the spirit of consolation that all those who shall be anointed with this oil may be freed from sin and receive consolation and life. God of all consolation, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit the consoler into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit and deliver them from every affliction. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it 
may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning, at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove re returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now, the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men and by the anointing with oil, olive oil you make us radiant with your joy at your command Aaron was washed with water and your servant Moses his brother anointed him priest these two foreshadowed greater things to come May your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, ask John for baptism in the waters of the Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved Son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that Chrism takes its name. And with Chrism, you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this Chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam. And when they are anointed with this holy oil, Make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share the eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the prayer of the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by your wondrous designs were pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people He has made His own, but with a brother's kindness He also chose men, to become sharers in this sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in His name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, and to nourish them with the word that strengthens them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, especially Lorenzo Ruiz, Pedro Calungsod, and Jose Maria de Manila, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Thank you. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a while. On behalf of Bishop Abilio, I would like to thank our brother priests, the Vicars Foreign, for attending our Mass this morning. And I also wish to thank all of you for joining the live streaming of this Christmas Mass from the Manila Cathedral. We greet specially our brother priests and we pray that one day, hopefully on the installation of our new Archbishop, we could all once again gather here in the cathedral as a presbyterium with our lay faithful. We also wish to thank TV Maria for broadcasting this Mass and all our media partners, especially the social communications ministry of our parishes. To our dear brother priests, the holy oils for the parishes, shrines, and chaplaincies will be given to your vicar foreign, who will make arrangements for their distribution. The holy oils for the hospital chaplaincies will be given to Father June Abogado, our Minister of the Ministry on Healthcare. Priests who will need a personal supply of the holy oils may get them from the Manila Cathedral after Holy Week. Representatives will be required to present a letter of authorization. I would also like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to watch Fiesta, ang makulay na pananampalataya ng mga Pilipino. This is a special documentary presented by the Jesuit Communications in cooperation with the Manila Cathedral about the colorful festival and processions in the Philippines. This is also in line with our celebration of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. Fiesta will be aired on April 3, Holy Saturday, after our Easter Vigil at 10.30 in the evening over GMA 7. I also wish to thank our uh, Polish friends, Peter and Marcin, and the Filipino staff of RNF Church Services for upgrading the sound system of the Manila Cathedral. The, this project of the Manila Cathedral, the Manila Cathedral Foundation, and LH Foundation has been delayed for one year because of the pandemic. But thank God, it is almost complete. And I really hope that soon you could come personally to hear how it sounds. Para po tayong nasa mga simbahan sa Europe. And, and so I thank them for bringing their technology um, and for their expertise. Here in the Archdiocese of Manila, they have also installed the sound system at Holy Family Parish in Makati, San Rafael Parish in Tondo, and in San Fernando de Dilao Parish in Paco. And so to my brother priests who are interested in improving their sound system, uh, they have an office here in Makati, and uh, we also have available brochures. Uh, you may also consult them after the Mass. And finally, finally, since today is the exact day of the 500th anniversary of the first Mass, we invite you to join the Mass in Limasawa to be celebrated by the Apostolic Nuncio. This Mass will be broadcasted today at 10 o'clock in the morning. And tonight at 9 o'clock, 
for our weekly healing rosary for the world, our rosary will be broadcasted from the Holy Cross and the First Mass Parish in Limasawa, Southern Leyte. That is why let us uh, celebrate this day, the 500th anniversary of the First Mass in the Philippines, and we wish everyone a blessed celebration of the Easter Triduum. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Please stand. Ang Easter Triduum po natin dito sa Manila Cathedral at sa ibang mga paroke ng Archdiocese ay gagawin po ng alas tres ng hapon. Kaya bukas po ang Last Supper natin ay alas tres at sa Good Friday ang ating celebration of the Veneration of the Cross alas tres. At ganun din po ang ating Easter Vigil ay magsisimula ng as alas tres ng hapon. Yan po ay inadjust natin dahil po sa curfew. Dear brothers, in this Eucharistic celebration, we have blessed the chrism and the oil of the sick to emphasize the mystery of the Church as a sacrament of Christ. Who sanctifies every reality and situation of life? To you, brother priests, they are now entrusted in order that through your ministry, divine grace, bringer of strength and life, may flow into our people. Respect, venerate, and protect with particular care these oils, signs of God's grace. The persons and the places and things that will be blessed by them may radiate the very holiness of God, who by a marvelous gift of His love has willed that in the sacramental signs the events of salvation history may be mystically renewed. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today. 